This video was made possible by EA Game Changers and I'm grateful to have received a review copy of the pack. In this case, it's important to disclose that my copy was free. Anyway, if you know me, you know I never do reviews, but I've been asked by a couple of people to share my opinion, so I decided to give my thoughts in a review of Island Living. It's definitely one of the lowest picks in terms of gameplay additions, and I'll explain my issues with it while we go over its features and how they work. I'll invite you to share your opinion as well so that people from the future can make a better decision for themselves. First, the setting, Sulani. While I want my review to be gameplay centric, I do want you to see some of what you get in the aesthetic areas. I'm opening with a strength here, to be clear, but the new neighborhood of Sulani is definitely as great looking as you might hope. It is obvious that building a nice world was a high priority for Maxis, and they did pull that off. The sun shines bright and there's a pretty view everywhere you look. It feels like a lovely place to live and has its own unique weather patterns for season's owners, even a monsoon. The islander's architecture and culture borrows heavily from Polynesia and other island peoples like the Maori. I learned a few things about activities of different cultures from this pack and there's a chance you will too. There's a lot inspired by tribal customs, traditional foods, and even food preparation techniques like the hangi inspired volcanic barbecue series that allows you to cook meat in the ground and come back when it's ready a couple hours later. Also, kava, a relaxing drink, is present and makes Sims happy with a relaxed moolah. You can have a party based around this drink. While I won't do an exhaustive take on Build By, everything fits right in and is clearly inspired by the culture of island nations with geometric patterns found on a number of things, intricate wood carvings, and solid craftsmanship. Events like the new Kava party you can throw offer some new things to experience, as do the town parties that randomly happen on this lot. The community spontaneously gets together to enjoy a bonfire. That's really cool and probably authentic island life somewhere, but a problem is that there's no gameplay here. Standing around a fire making friends in a game with no real purpose to friendships isn't really gameplay to me. Actually, it's pretty dull. I wish there were a reason we would want to attend things like this other than for a time when social need is low. So this is a core game problem but it relates to island living in that these are features yet they're mainly visual in nature. New events aren't very useful when there's very little reason to ever experience these get togethers unless you're a person who plays for a story that you're making. That said, I don't feel much interesting will happen at a thing like this because there are too few interactive objects on the lot. It requires players to spice it up somehow rather than supplying the spice on its own. Despite all of this, I want to be extremely clear. The textures and artwork that went into this pack came out very well and the world's well designed. They gave this part a lot of love and I don't want to detract from that. Cass features a lot of sunny island clothing for Sims, some nice new hair my friend is absolutely wild about, and these really nice tribal tattoos. I hear these are very important to people in those cultures. They're painful as they're done with using things like knives or chisels made of shark's teeth. These tend to go on the legs, arms, and face, and island living lets you go all out if you want. You can make a sim with one of two new traits, Child of the Ocean, for sims who love mermaids, fish, and don't want to harm the wildlife, and Child of the Islands, which gives you a connection to the island's spiritual ancestors. Now this is alright, and I wish more traits had this depth. Most of Sims 4's traits are an afterthought that only influences emotions at random and don't give any unique bonuses, but this is a cool trait. There's also a good amount of depth to Child of the Ocean various things trigger emotions rather than just a random moodlet. There's also a new aspiration that rewards you for chilling on the beach using one of the new features, sun tanning. Now onto the gameplay segment, which we will break into several topics. First up, beach combing. Sims can comb the beach for collectibles or trash that can help Sulani's environment. More on that later. You'll find random things like potato chips, a seashell, and a live fish. This feature reminds me of the next one and I'll explain that. Island Living has these boys and they are the only major source of interactivity between you and the ocean. If you want to dive, you go here. 
You'll find in shallow water you can snorkel. This activity is for fun and building fitness, I guess. But it doesn't do much for your sim and is in general just a fun activity like a lot of things, like sandcastles. Deep water buoys have an option to free dive or scuba dive and this is unfortunately a rabbit hole. You can make your sim better at this with fitness and can buy gear to open up new options but it's always going to be going underwater for collectibles and filling up my inventory with stuff like the minor combing the beach feature does. The thing is inventory management in Sims 4 is such a nightmare that this is almost a punishment to get this random stuff and have to sell them one at a time. This is the same problem beach combing has. There is a cave on Mua Palim that is very much like this. The sim goes in, finds random stuff. It's a legit way to get kelp without spending satisfaction, but you quickly run out of text and they're often not very funny or anything to make them interesting in the first place. This is an example of this type of functionality being watered down as rocket science allowed you to select between a couple choices to impact the outcome based in part on reading comprehension. Now it's just, give me random collectibles and stuff my inventory with things. I need things and more things that I'll keep forever because they're annoying to sell. <laughs> Dolphins are now a thing. A random pack of them goes to different buoys and you can click the swirling fish to talk to them and feed them for $2 a pop. Eventually you can befriend the dolphin, but the goal here is to have a dolphin buddy. The problem is repetition. You do the same stuff with it and maybe a moodlet. No real impact on gameplay, just a way to have fun a couple times adoring the animation and a source of just boredom and sameness. Sims can now get a suntan or if they're out too long, a burn. The thing is suntans and burning is a risk trade off in reality. You want a tan but burning isn't desirable and you feel like you look good for some time afterward. Whether you do or not. <laughs> anyway, in Sims, a sunburn is a four hour uncomfortable moolet, then it's mostly over. No impact on gameplay, just a visual. I would have at least have liked to be able to avoid a sunburn in the shade or seek sunlight to get a tan in the first place. Thankfully, you only get these burns when you deliberately lay out. Island Living comes with two new modes of transportation, the jet ski and canoe. Both of these allow you to keep them in your inventory, meaning your sim can use them automatically while routing. The thing about transportation is it's used to get somewhere, right? Where do you want to go in Solani? The only reason to cross a body of water is to go to the buoys. No reason to travel reduces the effect of having decent transportation in the game. You're also able to swim in open water to get around and fitness will improve your swim style and speed as you level it. This was a nice touch, but it's a bit marred by the fact that you can completely switch to an aqua zip jet ski at any time you like and you won't really need swimming in the future after that. Maxis has expressed his desire to make open water swimming everywhere a thing, but I sort of question how often people will care to use it when fitness is used to just keep your figure in The Sims 4. New in this pack are odd jobs, which lets you bring up an interface with the phone. You can select from various tasks, some of which are rabbit holes that let your sim do something for another islander to earn a little money. Some of them task you with fetch quests to go around the island like mail me so many seashells. Alright, so the conservationist career, it's marginally better than a rabbit hole. <laughs> this is a new career tailored to a new system in Salini, the environment system. Improving the environment is a matter of cleaning up litter on the beaches and in the sea, testing the water and passing policy. By doing these things, you'll get an improved ecosystem. The career is one of the work from home careers, and I swear I saw someone compare it to scientists, but that's not the case. These have activity, but they're not like the active careers from get to work that have a lot of work put into them, and this leads to a core flaw. The extremely narrow range of activities you may have to do is the core flaw. 
go get some trash, take pictures, get some trash in the sea. See, the problem with this entire environment and litter system is that trash in the sea, trash in the beach, even with multiple models of trash, is all the same thing. Tell your sim to complete the animation and you've succeeded. Furthermore, it's probably an animation you've seen before. So working on the environment quickly gets repetitive and eventually you will probably send your sim into work to get away from these activities. In gaming, fetch quests are hated because they take the same idea, dress it in different ways, and we as players know they're all really the same without any complexity or depth. This is that. Game filler, but as a main feature. It's perfectly fine that it is to be included if you can't think of a better way to do this, and I certainly can't, but it cannot be one of the star additions to the pack. It qualifies as an additional side activity that might get you interested a few times, but in this case, you put a laser focus on it and burn out quick. So the work from home careers in general don't do it for me as a main feature. If they're going to be this week, there should be a few of them at least in an expansion. And that's what City Living provided. Politician, critic, and social media. Plus a location, plus festivals, a new skill, and a talking toilet. You can join in one of two career tracks with similar pay. There are abilities they just don't do much other than function as money or social buttons, so it doesn't matter much that there are two branches in this regard. A positive that does differentiate them are the two different traits, natural speaker or master of the sea, and they're pretty alright traits. So you do enough of this environmental cleanup, whether you're in the conservationist career or not, and you'll abruptly be told that your efforts are paying off. If you can get past Mua Palim is improving to the thriving level, you've done the quest to clean up the island. Just the one. The environment system I mentioned only impacts this one place and there's not much here. The trees get nice and bright green, more flowers show up, and you may see butterflies and sea turtles around the area. There is an albino dolphin that pops up on the special beach lot on Mua Palim and sea turtle eggs will hatch on the beach. Here's the thing about these two rewards. They don't do anything. I see no reason to do any of this past the first time. It's worse than Strangerville in terms of replay value, but at the price tag of an expansion, which should explain to you why I didn't knock Strangerville. So Island Living's main features of conservation and the environment system didn't do it much for me. Surely mermaids can pick up the slack, right? As the final main feature, mermaids were teased at the end of the main trailer and highly desired by fans who dig this type of thing. I am not one of them, but I promise you I would not be hating on mermaids if they had more abilities and bonuses, along with some kind of system built around them that would differentiate one mermaid from another. So you eat a kelp which you buy for 500 satisfaction. You can get that 15 minutes or less into the game if you apply yourself at all. You are now a fully functioning mermaid with tons of power and years of training at doing magical shit. You can call a thunderstorm, rain, or clear up the skies if you're a player that owns seasons. Why not all weather types? You can do a super romantic kiss in the water. You can be a jerkwad to other sims by pulling them under and tease at a big monster under the water. You can fill up your needs by sucking them out of a sim. You also swim amazingly fast. See, any new sim game taking place here would benefit from athletics to get out to the buoys. This would give you a reason to level a skill that is only useful very rarely. But you can eat a kelp, you're a mermaid. Now you're the best swimmer and you didn't need to do anything to work for it. The mermaid swimming does bother me for some reason because I know it's highly inefficient how she's doing it and feel like it would have been a great improvement if there was even a few feet of depth to the water so they could travel how animals want to when they want to go fast. This isn't as shallow as plant sim or something. There are abilities with a little going for them there, but they're mostly forgettable due to not a great enough an impact on gameplay. There are some of us who play Sims 4 kind of like a tycoon game, Sim, or an RPG hybrid, who like leveling up, getting abilities, and combining bonuses to make really powerful combos. So I want to clarify that it's not just that I feel my desire should make you have to level up and unlock these powers, it's not the case. They also needed to implement some kind of system that would allow us to in some way make them different so they aren't all the same. 
No matter where you stand with me on leveling up, mermaids are all the same and that's the truth. You won't use most of their powers. If you have seasons, you have a weather machine. Island living has some things going for it, but in a big area it has a flaw and I feel I'm not the only one noticing this. Gameplay. It needed more primary and deeper gameplay. By primary, I mean skills and activities that are rewarding, not transportation, random things that give moodlets or satisfy fun, because we have enough of those things. We need good old-fashioned gameplay that keeps people returning and doing different things. The problem is present in many packs, but it's pretty damning here. If you start a sim, make a mermaid, which requires only 500 satisfaction, and play in the conservationist career while fishing on the side, you've completely done this pack in one sitting. If that gameplay were extremely compelling, I would not be so hard on it, but what's here has not been molded and refined with care. There are little features I've left out like the volcano and elementals and a couple others I can think of, but there just isn't anything deep there to justify drawing out the video even further. Everything else that exists in the pack is scenery. They did fantastic with world building and some neighborly sim behaviors. It needed more work to live up to its potential, whether that means longer development or preferably more people so they can have the time to expand on the existing thing they do create. I cannot fault for developers for problems outside their control and feel they're good people who, if given more time, would have made something I could have enjoyed. Its biggest failure is definitely replay value. Nearly all the rewards and objects for gameplay are one-dimensional or restricted to Sulani. Some people will be bored because they don't find enough depth in what they're doing the first time, but having everything contained to Sulani other than build by means you have very little to do in other worlds. This does not expand the experience for me. An expansion to send ripples into many aspects of gameplay and make the game deeper. If you're salivating for this pack, be sure you want it for Solani more than anything. If that's what you want, you get what you want. You are a lot less likely to feel burned. Don't buy it for gameplay, get it on sale and it'll be more appropriately priced as nearly all game packs have more actual gameplay than this. The people who enjoy Sims with depth are definitely left wanting more and I am one of them. I'd like to see the franchise recover its footing, but packs with gameplay this shallow and thin do not help. We've seen shallow, then becoming thinner also is unacceptable to me as a player. Gameplay expansion should give you more to do and extend a game's life. This release that took several months to develop bought us days. I'm sorry that I cannot put these out sooner if my opinion would be valuable to you. But I don't want to half-ass something like this and I want to stand by my opinion, not give a rash first impression or completely fail as a fan side owner to voice an opinion on the quality here. I feel that it is important and I hope that you do too. Share your opinion below and hit the bell if you like this. I may do more reviews and you can support my channel in the description. Maxis is a good studio and I like them as people, so if this is frustrating for you, be courteous to them. This is now my longest video and it's taken a toll on my voice. I left a few bad parts despite that because I think most of you will get it. Thanks guys and have a nice weekend.